Okay, in this question, we're asked to determine the unit for momentum. The equation for momentum is mass times velocity, and we know that mass should have the units of kilograms, and velocity is meters per second. So momentum doesn't have a special unit. You can just get it by combining these DC units for mass and velocity. So the unit for momentum is kilogram meters per second. Okay, second question, we're asked to show that the unit for Young's modulus is newtons per meter squared. So we're given the equation for Young's modulus and all the components with its units. Okay, let's start with the top. We've got force times length, which is newtons times meters. And at the bottom, we've got area times extension, which is meters squared times meters. And that becomes meters cubed at the bottom there. I'm going to bring the meters cubed at the bottom to the top. So because it's meters to the power of 3 now, it becomes meters to the power of minus 3 when it comes to the top. Okay, the uh, newton meter there, the meter is just to the power of 1. Okay, I'm writing the 1 in now so you can visualize what's going on. So when I multiply the meters to 1 to the, and the meters to minus 3, it be, uh, I have to add the indices, I have to add the powers together. So it becomes newtons per meter squared. Okay, the equation below links force, area, and speed. Determine the unit for the constant k. Okay, we're going to find the unit for constant k, so let's make that the subject of the equation, like so both the half uh, a and v squared to the bottom. Uh, F has the unit of newtons. Half is just a number, it doesn't have a unit, so we just rub that out for now. We, we don't need to care about that when it comes to units. Area is going to be meters squared, and speed is going to be meters per second, but the speed is being squared, so it's going to be, we have to square that as well. We have to square the units as well. Okay, let's simplify this. Um, so first of all, I've written all the units out and I've, I'm going to expand the brackets for the square there. So meters per second becomes meters squared second uh, to the minus two. Okay, now I'm going to uh, join the meters squared and the meters squared here to become meters of four, like so. And then I'm going to bring everything to the top. So me meters of four becomes meters to the minus four when it comes to the top. And sec per second squared becomes second squared. Final example. In the equation shown below, x is a force with units of newtons. B has the units of newtons per meter squared. Determine the unit for A and C. Okay, so x has the unit of newtons. So that means everything on the right hand side must be consistent and should also have the units of newtons. Okay, so that means uh, when you're adding A and B times C, each individual component should also have the unit of newtons well. Uh, this is because of the rule that you can only add and subtract quantities that have the same unit. So because we're adding A and B times C, they'll have to have the same unit. So for example, you can't add newtons and mass of, with uh, kilograms, for example, or you can't add joules and uh, time. Okay, those are two different things. You can't add them or, or subtract them. Okay, so we also told that B has units of newtons per meter squared. So what does the unit for C need to be in order that B times C has the unit of newtons. So C is going to have to be meters squared. Okay, so um, then it multiplies with the newtons per meter squared and it becomes newtons there.